pagbati na may ngiti sa aking mga lami. Naghahanap ba kayo ng makakatuwang sa pag review ng inyong anak? Meron yan sa DepEd. Ang Itulay Online Tutorial ay libre at handog ng ating kagawaran sa pangunguna ng OUA ICTS EdTech. Ito ay isang proyektong makatutulong sa mga mag-aaral, katuwang ang mga magulang o kasama sa kanika nilang tahanan para masagutan at maunawaan ang mga modules. Hanga din ng programang Itulay ang matulungan ang ating mga guro sa kanilang mga blended learning classes. Ang ating itulay ay mula kinder hanggang senior high school. Bukod sa academics, meron din tayong mga special programs. Gaya ng All is Wellness, Reading and Math Remediation, Storytelling, Mommy Tech Talks, Classes sa Gramatika, Speech Class, Financial Literacy, at marami pang iba. Pinalawig din ng itulay ang ating Alive Program para sa mga mag-aaral mula grade 1 hanggang grade 3. Gayun din ay mayroon tayong ALS Program at Fed Tutorials na makasisigurong makakamit ng lahat ang inclusive education. May SPED Hotline na rin para sa inyong mga katanungan patungkol sa special education. Kaya, subaybayan mula lunes hanggang biyernes Mula ikasyam ng umaga hanggang ikapito ng gabi ang ating itulay. Sa ating pagtutulungan, maiaangat natin ang bawat isa. Ating itutulay ang pagkatuto upang di mapigil ang pag-aaral ng kabataang Pilipino. Itulay natin ito, Sulong Edukalidad. Mabuhay! Good day to all! I am your tutor, Madge. Welcome to Itulay, a free online tutorial, an initiative of the Department of Education, Information and Communications Technology Service, Educational Technology Unit, ICTS EdTech. This program is aimed at helping and assisting learners from kindergarten, senior high school, ALS, alive and SPED learners. Aside from answering the modules, the Itulai is offering programs which you will surely look forward to. Together with our parents and teachers, the Itulai will bridge the gaps where difficulty and ease meet in learning new knowledge and skills. So, let us prepare our module, pen and paper. Ready your mind to see and hear worthwhile and interesting lessons. Let us now study and learn together with our volunteer online tutors. Tara na! Ayan, isang mapagpalayang hapon sa inyong lahat. Kamusta po kayo mga learners sa iba't ibang panig ng mundo? Yes. At hello sa aking mga estudyante sa Francisco Bangoy National High School. Ayan. At saka sa lahat ng mga estudyante sa buong Pilipinas. Kamusta po kayo? Welcome po tayo sa ating Itulay Online Tutorial Program. And so, sa mga hindi pa nakakilala sa akin, ako nga pala ang inyong tutor na si Tutor Rob. Kasama ko si Tutor Jen. Kaming dalawa ay nanggaling sa Division of Davao City. Ako ay nanggaling sa Francisco Bangoy National High School. At si Tutor Jen naman ay nanggaling sa Daniel or Aguinaldo National High School. Yan. At tuturuan po, po, po kayo na Science Grade 7. So, every Monday po yan, 1 p.m. to 1.40 p.m. Okay, so bago natin simula ng ating pagkatuto, um, nais ko po sanang i-recognize ang ating only one mahusay chuti of the week. Ayan. At no other than is Miss Samantha D. Blasi. She's a very consistent student from Liano High School, Grade 7, Section Diamond A. Ayan. So napakaganda ng kanyang output. Ang ginawa niya ay nag-video siya sa kanyang kaalaman 
patungkol sa five layers of the atmosphere. Ayan. She's from the Division of Caloocan, National Capital Region, at ang kanyang butihing teacher na si Teacher Michael John S. Manicar. Congratulations po. At saka sa kanyang magulang na si Miss Rowena Blasi. Ayan. Congratulations sa inyong lahat. Ngayon, magkakaroon tayo ng checking of attendance, kaya humanda na kayo. Um, sa nakikita ko, kahit na hindi ko sinabi mag-comment, ay nag-comment na talaga sila ng kanilang full name, section, school, at saka name ng kanilang science teacher tulad ni Carlo Miguel Malani, Malonzo na, na kaka-birthday lang nung nakaraan. Siya ay nanggaling sa grade 7 section cream of Pampanga High School at ang kanyang teacher naman ay si Sir Michael C. Malyari. Ayan. And now you can share your live session right now and of course, do not forget to share in your social media accounts. Alam ko, marami kayong media, social media accounts. And of course, you can share it to your group chat and your Facebook groups as well. And don't forget to tag your two friends. Ayan, to tag your two friends in order for them to be, ano ba, um, para malaman nila na nagsisimula ng ating tutorial program in the comment section. And of course, do not forget to bring your module with you your pen and your paper, of course, as we go along with our discussions. There are some important discussions that you need to take note in order for you not to forget those um, keywords, those familiar words for you to learn more. Ayan. Okay? So, welcome po tayo sa ating quarter four, week four. Okay? So, we thank God because it's already week four and ito yung pinakahuling quarter of this school year. Ayan. I think we have week five and week six for our lessons. At mag e tayo ng one week ng another week for our recognition. Ayan. So malapit na talaga and I am very excited na ma-recognize yung mga sudyante na patuloy pa rin sa kanilang pagkatuto kahit nasa, nasa harap sila ng pandemya. Ayan. So our topic for this morning is all about the different phenomena in the atmosphere. Ayan. So we've learned the different layers of atmospheres, right? Last week. ba? Namely, ano yung mga ano? Nating mga five layers of the... Okay, five layers of... The atmosphere, you can comment on our section, our comment section, so that we may be able to know kung ano ba yung pagkatuto nyo sa ating five layers of atmosphere. Ayan. Ngayon, pag-aaralan naman natin ang iba't ibang fenomena, ang mga nangyayari sa ating atmosphere. Ayan. Sige. And I know you are ready to have our session for this afternoon. So simulan na natin. Kumuha na kayo ng inyong lib ng yung notebook at saka ng yung pen para simulan na natin ang ating pretest. Bago 'yan, ito ang ating module na ginagamit ngayon. Ang ating writer ay si Ma'am Juvie Ann Q Farinas at ang ating editor naman is si Ma'am LVB Pama from the Davao City Division. Ayan. Thank you so much Ma'am for letting us borrow your module for this week. Ayan. Okay? Our most essential learning competencies is that you have to know the different phenomena that occur in the atmosphere. And together with are the objectives or the goals for this afternoon. What are our goals? Is to account for the occurrences of sea breeze, land breeze, monsoons, and intertropical convergence zone, or ITCZ. Ayan, so these are the, the terms that we're going to know. What, what is sea breeze, what is land breeze, what is monsoons, and what is intertropical convergence zone, of which very common yung naririnig dur during weather updates. Diba? Okay. So another goal or objective is we need to explain the impacts of this phenomena to Filipinos' way of life. Okay? 
may um, nakakatulong ba yung phenomena na nangyayari sa atmosphere sa atin or nakakasira yun ang ating ano pag-aaralan. Ayan, so let's have our pretest. Okay? So are you ready? I think you are all ready. Kindly type on our chat box if you are ready. Yeah, so while waiting for the comments of of yours, I would like to greet also my students in front of me who's who's listening right now. Ayan, the grade eight section Bayabas. Ayan, yan sila. Okay, so are we all set and ready for our pretest? Okay, so I will read the directions. Read each question carefully. Choose the letter of the correct answer. Use a separate sheet of paper for your answers, or you can comment it down. Yeah, just like that. Okay, dagdagan pa natin. If you want to be recognized more, you can add your school and your teacher if you want. Okay. Sige. So let's start the ball rolling. Okay. So number one, which of the following best explains ITCZ? A, the zone where warm air rises. B, the zone where cold fronts form in the equator. C, the zone where the west winds meet the subtropical high pressure belt. Or letter D, the zone where the winds from the northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere meet. So what is your answer? Is it A, B, C, or D? You can, you can comment in our chat box. Okay? So what's the answer? It's letter... Let's see... Okay, it's letter letter D. Very good. Okay, so it's the zone where the winds of the northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere meet. Ayan, congratulations. Wow, ang galing. Ang daming sumagot ng letter D. Very good. Now for number two. Which of the following hits up faster, land or water? Is it land or water? A, land hits up faster than water. B, water hits up faster than land. Or letter C, both land and water warm up at the same rate. Or letter D, rate of warming varies depending on weather conditions and climate. So what's your answer for number two? Ayan, congratulations. Ang daming nakakuha ng tama sa question number one. Now let's hear and let's know the answer for number two. The correct answer for number two, it's letter... What's the answer, students? Grade 8, Bayabas. Is it A, B, C, or D? Ayan, may mga live audience ako. Yes? B? D? Okay. The correct answer, it's letter A. The land hits up faster than the water. Why? Because land... Is mostly it's a solid state while water is a liquid state. That's why the, the molecules are compact or in, they're compact together while the water is loosely compact. Okay, number three. What happens to the surrounding air when warm air rises? A, the surrounding air will move in all directions. B, the surrounding air will move to a higher place. C, the surrounding air will move away from the rising air. Or letter D, the surrounding air will move towards the place where warm air is rising. So what's your answer? Okay, so the answer for number three, it's letter D. Very good. The surrounding air will move towards the place where warm air is rising. Yeah, so sige lang, it's okay that you commit mistakes because that is just a pretest. Later we will going to discuss and you may able to know that ah tama pala, yun pala. So it's okay. There is a aha ano mo moment later on. 
Okay? Next, four. Which of the following best differentiates sea breeze from land breeze? Ayan. A. Sea breeze and land breeze both happen in the day. B. Sea breeze and land breeze both happen in the night. C. Sea breeze happens in the night and land breeze happens in the day. Or letter D. Sea breeze happens in the day and the land breeze happens in the night. So what's your answer for number four? Okay? Sige. Um, feel free to, to comment your your the letter of your choice. The correct answer for number four, it's letter. Very good. Kerubin Gabriel Villamore. I am waiting for your output together with Renz Giver. And Malonzo, hmm, wala pa kayong output ha. I hope mo kagawa kayo ng output of this ano of this session. Okay, the correct answer for number four it's letter D. Very good. Adrian Pasay also got it correct, and also Shimari Buen Sosiso. Yes, Sagun, of which she is the first one who commented in our live tutorial a while ago. It's also correct. Okay, let's go to number five. In what way does monsoon affect the way of life of farmers? Again, in what way does monsoon affect the way of life of farmers? Letter A, huge waves in the seas. B, lightning for power plants. Or letter C, sunlight to wither the agricultural crops. Or letter D, water for vegetation and other agricultural crops. What's your answer for number five? Ayan. Sige. Um, keep coming. Um, comment lang po kayo ng anong letter of which you feel na ganito siguro ang tamang sagot and so on and so ever. So this is just a pretest and this is just to test your prior knowledge regarding this topic. Okay. The correct answer for number five is letter D. It is water for vegetation and other agricultural crops. Ayan. So congratulations. Kindly comment your scores. Ayan. So comment your scores in our chat box. And you are amazing and fantastic for that. Okay. Congratulations. Now let's proceed to our lesson. Ayan. So thank you for your scores and thank you for for keeping alive in our session and also for you know um for your cooperation as well and participation yan medyo mahina yung internet ko kaya that's why please bear with me at maraming salamat sa mga nag-share at nag-comment please boost your shares mag power share po tayo mga finger warriors ayan Sige, let's start. So I have prepared a picture, a diagram here. And I want you to say something. What comes up to your mind while observing this kind of illustration? Okay? What comes up in your mind um, while having this kind of ano, picture? Okay? So... I am waiting for your comments in the chat box. So, di ba, very familiar to the UST Pag-asa, MTS, AT, IR1, yan. So, what do you think is that? Okay, Renz Giver answered Typhoon. Okay, good. So, yan ang panghawakan natin ngayon. So, it means that may papuntang Typhoon sa ating bansa. Okay, and that is also part of a phenomena happening in the atmosphere of which we are very affected. Can you name some of the bagyo that we Filipinos conquered? Yes, you can name some ano, um, typhoons that we conquered. Yan. Sabi din ni Adrian, it's their coming typhoon. Sabi ni Eliza, it's weather forecast. Okay, all of your answers are correct. And these words of yours are connected with our topic for this afternoon. Now, 
Welcome to our topic, which is the common atmospheric phenomena. Ayan. So, may mga pa-picture tayo dyan, di ba? Okay? So, unahin natin si wind. And that is also a phenomena. Winds are called the moving air. Ayan. This phenomenon occurs when there is an equal heating of Earth's surface. Again, wind occurs when there is an equal, hindi pagkapantay-pantay, na init sa Earth. Okay? This heating causes air to move in a certain direction. The direction of the wind can be determined using the wind vane. Ayan. So, pag sobra na, um, if there's too much wind, tawag na dyan is whirlwind or ipo-ipo. Diba? So, meaning there's too much unequal heating of the Earth's surface. And how could we determine the direction of the wind? We can determine using this kind of device. This is an improvised device called wind vane. It is a typical wind vane used to determine the direction of the wind. Ayan. So, I know this is very familiar to you. And nung grade 6 pa ako, if I could still remember, I my teacher also told me to make this kind of device so that we will know where the wind blows, where is the location or the direction, rather, of the wind. And that's what we call wind vane. Ayan. And there is such called as convection cycle okay so what is this convection cycle all about in connection with the wind okay when warm air is rising the colder air in the surroundings will move to the place where warm air is rising to fill and replace the rising warm air okay so in short it's like a cycle this movement of the air which is also felt as blowing is what we call as Wind. Yeah, naka highlight yan siya, wind. This process happens continuously and creates a cycle which is known as air convection. Generally, air convection is a process of air circulation wherein the warm air is rising, giving way to cooler, to cooler air to sink and replace the rising warm air. Okay? So as you can see, Meron po tayong para siyang, okay, para siyang cycle, okay? So, the air gets colder as you get higher into the atmosphere, right? As what I have mentioned last week about elevation, that the higher the elevation, the lower the temperature. And because of the sun, the sun warms the land which warms the air, it's the sun, okay? That's the reason why there is a warm, okay? That there is a warm air because of the presence of the sun. Okay, now, let's talk about the sea breeze, okay? In sea breeze, this happened during the day, okay? Morning. As the sun hits, okay? As the sun hits the earth's surface, yan, the land hits up faster than the water in the sea. Yan. So, in explain ko na, it is mas mabilis uminit yung land kaysa sa tubig because of the molecules, right? Therefore, the air over the land becomes warmer than the air over the water. The warm air over the land expands and rises then. Okay? So, this is the warm air from the land that rises. Then the cool air above the sea blows inland from the sea to replace the rising air. That is why when you walk along the shore during the day, the wind is cooler. Ah, di ba kung mahilig kayong um, magpahangin sa dalampasigan, masarap siya. Uh, masarap siyang, you really feel the cool breeze during daytime. This phenomenon is called sea breeze. Ayan. And that is happening during 
daytime. Now, how about during nighttime? Okay, ang tawag naman dyan is a land breeze. Okay, so this is what will happen in land breeze. At night, when the sun has set, so wala nang araw, so meaning the land and the sea will cool down. Siyempre, kasi wala nang init eh. However, the land will lose heat and cool down faster than the water in the sea. Of course, ang mas, as mas maunang lumamig ay ang land kaysa sa water. Okay? Or the sea water. See, thus, the sea will stay warm longer this time. That's why pag, pag nag-night swimming kayo, you will feel the warmth from the seawater. Pero pag labas nyo or pag out na kayo sa tubig, you feel too cold. Yan. Because since, okay, since the sea is now warmer than the land, the air above the sea is also warmer causing it to rise. The air from the land will then move out to the sea to replace the rising air. So just follow the the cycle. Therefore, when you have your night swimming, as I've said, the sea water is warm, but when you but when you but you will be out, but when you will be out of the water, you will feel too cold. Ayan. So this phenomenon is called land breeze. Okay? So, meron din tayong tinatawag na low pressure area. In low pressure area, okay, in low pressure area, this is very common in your, upon hearing, okay, upon hearing during the weather forecast, di ba? Sa weather forecast nyo, you will able to hear, sorry, you will able to hear um, low pressure area, high pressure area. So this also, this phenomena also um, contributes the, the weather in our atmosphere. So what is low pressure area? Low pressure area is the area where the warm air rises are called the low pressure area. Pag sinasabi naman natin high pressure area, the area where the cool air where where the cool air sinks it is denser than the warm air it's called the high pressure area now take note class that the movement of the air is always from the high pressure area to the low pressure area okay um yun talaga ang movement ng air it's always from the high pressure area to low pressure area. But um, take note, hindi lahat, okay, this is just one to, uh, to clarify na hindi lahat, not necessarily pag low pressure area yung lugar, not necessarily there's a typhoon, okay? Um, it's just an indication that there's a rainfall due to greater accumulation of water vapor in the atmosphere brought by the rising warm air. Take note, di ba nga, um, napapasin nyo, during every, I think, morning, mainit, sobrang init, di ba, class? Sobrang init. Tapos sasabihin ng mga matatanda na, ah, uulan ngayong gabi. Uulan ngayong gabi. And kalimitan talaga, um, oftentimes talaga, tama sila. Because there is a greater accumulation of water vapor during daytime. Kasi nga, sobrang init and it evaporates, go rise up. Kaya siya, um, pagdating ng, ng gabi, uulan. Okay? Ayan. So, hello, hello. Um, by the way, I would like to greet our directors. Hello, Tutor Madge and Tutor Kevin, who is also listening right now. Hello po. So, yun po. Hindi hindi parating pag may low pressure area is may typhoon na low. Meron lang siya, it, isa lang siyang indication na may 
magkakaroon ng rainfall or ulan sa area na yon. Okay. Now, let's go to monsoon. Ano nga ba tong monsoon? Okay. Monsoon is a land and sea breeze can occur over a wider area. Okay. It could be in land, it could be in sea breeze. Okay. So it's daytime and nighttime. Sea and land breezes over a large region which changes direction with the seasons. Monsoons are wind systems which are usually accompanied by heavy rainfall which greatly affects our country. Yan. In the Philippines, monsoon are known as hanging amihan at hanging habagat. Ayun. So, ating kilalanin ang hanging amihan at hanging abagat. Okay, so unahin natin si hanging amihan. Amihan or known as the Northeast Monsoon is a wind system experienced by Filipinos during colder months from December to February. So, class, pag umuulan during December to February, hanging amihan po ang nangyayari. There is a wind system which we experience, which is the hanging amihan. And the wind during this time blows from the higher pressure area in the Asian continent to the low pressure area south of the Philippines. Okay, again, hangamihan occurs during December to February. So, maulan during December to February. And this blows from the higher pressure area in the ancient or Asian rather, Asian continent to the low pressure area south of the Philippines. Ngayon, let's go to hanging habagat. Habagat naman or known as the southwest monsoon is a wind system wherein the wind will move from the higher pressure, same pa rin, di ba? Sabi ko that um, sa, sa, air, sa air blows, una talaga si higher pressure higher pressure to lower pressure. So, higher pressure area in Australia to the low pressure area in the Asian continent. So, this happens during the warmer months around June to November. So, that's why you are keep on asking, di ba summer, bakit, bakit ulan? Bakit may ulan? Is e summer ngayon? No. This is because of hanging habagat. Okay. And that is happening every June to November. Ayun. So always remember that southwest monsoon or hang habagat brings more rain than the north it north is monsoon, which is hanging amihan. So mas mas malala, hindi naman mas malala. Um, mas malakas ang ulan sa hanging habagat kaysa kay hanging amihan. Okay, so let's go to intertropical convergence zone. Ito yung very familiar sa inyo during weather update or shall we say ITCZ. Ayun. So may nag-share, can share your thoughts about about your experience during typhoon before we proceed to ITCZ. Sabi dito ni ni ano um Sabi ni Aryo, Northeast Monsoon, Hanging Amihan. Southeast Monsoon is Hanging Habagat. Okay, very good. I think you are taking notes. Sabi naman ni Carlos Miguel, Southwest Monsoon, North -est, Northeast Monsoon. Ayan, so I know that you are taking notes from our lecture for this afternoon. Ayan, so thank you for keep on um, chatting and commenting about our lesson for this afternoon. Now, let's go to intertropical conversion zone. Ano nga ba ito? Or ITCZ. Okay. ITCZ or the intertropical conversion zone is the place where winds in the areas near the equator meet or converge. Ayan. Hindi po siya pangalan ng bagyo. Kasi others may um, connotate that ITCZ is a name of a 
typhoon. No, it's not. It's a place where winds in the areas near the equator meet or converge. Okay? In this region, the air from the northern hemisphere and the air from the southern hemisphere come together. So um, I think that is one of our lessons, our first week lesson about the different directions. And we all know there is the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. And these air are coming from the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere converge near the equator. Ayan. So, so nakikita ninyo sa ating larawan. Ayan. So, ito yung equator. Nandito yung Philippines. And the air coming from the north and the air coming from the south converge. Okay? Rises, warm air rises. And this circle is the region, the location of the ITCZ. Yeah, so just want to clarify. And so, tayo sa Philippines, tayo talaga yung isa sa mga naapekto, may naapekto ka ng mga typhoons kasi malapit tayo sa equator where the warm air from the north and south converge and it's called ITCZ. Okay. So, ITCZ is the place where the wind in the tropical areas meet or converge. Accumulated warm air rising in the ITCZ will eventually form into clouds and develop further into rains and thunderstorms. Kaya tayo, so, sir, parang every month, ma maulan talaga. Yes, because um, ITCZ, where is, we're in the wind converge is near uh, in the equator and Philippines is near the equator. Yeah. Sabi naman ni Ariza dito, as she shared, during typhoon po, nakakaranas po tayo ng malakas na hangin at makalakas na buhos ng ulan. Marami pang mga kababayan natin sa iba't ibang lugar ang naapektuhan ng bagyong nagdaan. Tama. Napakaganda ng iyong wika. Sabi naman ni Kirubin, ang Pilipinas ay malapit sa equator. Kaya tayo ay nakakaranas ng tag-init at tag-ulan po. Saka tayo po ay napapalibutan ng katubigan po at karagatan. Very well said. Good. Okay. Sabi naman ni Jinky, Adra, the intertropical convergence zone where two tropical wind systems join specifically the northern and the southern hemisphere winds. Very good. Very well said. Sabi ni Arion, mostly typhoon hits Philippines because we are near at the equator. Yan. So I think all of you got the, the meat of our lesson for this afternoon. Ayun. So keep on, keep on sharing your thoughts regarding our lesson. Okay, so that's why, as you've said, that's why Philippines is greatly affected by this phenomenon due to its location in the tropics just above the equator. Ayan, just above the equator. The Pacific Ocean at the eastern part of the Philippines largely contributed to the evaporation of water vapor. And this water vapor forms the clouds which bring rains and thunderstorms. Kaya tayo ay nauggabi talaga yung ulan at bagyo. Pero bagaman tayo ay binabagyo at inuulan, tayo pa rin ay matatag at malakas dahil tayo mga Pilipino ay positibo, di ba? Na malabanan natin ang iba't ibang um, sakuna dahil tayo ay matatapang. At wala tayong inuurungan kahit bagyo pa man. Diba? Yun, sabi ni Ma'am Janet, salamat, I didn't know about ICTZ. Massachusetts is far from the equator. Yes, yes, Ma'am Janet, flood pa tayo. It's really far from the equator. And I think, I think the, um, I thank you for, for being so active in our tutorial program. Ayan. 
I think all of you already know what is intertropical conversion zone. So, hindi siya bagyo, ha? Now, so, si um, Alviza has said about the impacts. So, pag-usapan natin ang impacts. What are the impacts of this phenomena to Filipinos? Okay? So, we have the positive impact, of course, and the negative impact about this phenomena happening in the atmosphere. So, the positive impact, of course, monsoons makes farmers happy as there is an abundant water supply in irrigations for farmers' crops. Napaka-importante. It's very important that if you are a farmer, most especially, um, you know, plowing rice or ito, rice fields, kailangan there is an irrigation to sustain the water supply. So they're happy because of this. However, the negative impact naman, monsoon makes, monsoons make fisher folks unhappy as huge waves and heavy rainfall hamper their livelihood. Totoo nga naman, di ba? If, if, if palaging umuulan, um, hindi makakapaglayag ang ating mga kaibigan ng mga fisher folks dahil nga sobrang malaki yung alon at makina yung benta ang kita ng isda. Kaya medyo mahal yung isda kasi mahirap siyang hulihin because of monsoon. Okay. ITCZ affects Filipino because of its accompanying rainfall and thunderstorms. Yes, nasabi ko na that ITCZ located near the equator where in Philippines is also just above the equator. Yeah. And the Pag-asa also warned the affected areas of the possible flash floods and landslides due to excessive rain brought by the ITCZ and the low pressure area. Ayan. So, of course, pag-asa, okay, what is pag-asa? Okay, pag-asa is the Philippine Atmospheric Geophysical Astronomical Services Administration. Ayan. So, memorize that one. Philippine Atmospheric Geophysical Astronomical Services Administration. This government agency in the Philippines updates the weather conditions of the Philippines every now and then so that we Filipinos will be alarmed that our place will having a heavy rainfall so that we could be, you know, could be prepared of the things that we're going to do. We have before, during, and after things to do, right? During the phenomenon. Kayo ba? Um... Let me hear, I would like to hear your experiences during those times, those ondoy times, those, ano pa, yung Odette, which is the latest, maybe. Yun, you can share, you can chat on our group chat or on our chat box. What are those experiences that you have experienced? Okay. Sabi din dito na, um, ayan, Sabi ni Ar Arion, it is very important to the farmer that they have a water to sustain the crops. Very good. Sabi naman ni Kerubin, at pag may bagyo, nasasalanta ang mga pananim. Very good. Sabi naman ni Janela, pag may bagyo po, ang mga magnista po ay hindi nakakapala, nakakapaglaot. Very good. Sabi naman ni Renz, pero maganda po kapag tagulan. Bakit? Kasi hindi raw mainit. Yan. So, meron din naman din point. Okay? So, ayun. Thank you so much. Now, let's proceed to our assessment. Let's try if you have really understand our topic for this afternoon. Okay? So, same directions. I will not read the directions now. Okay, may humabol pa. Sabi ni Alriza, sa amin po, sa barangay, hindi po masyadong naapektuhan sa bagyong Odette. Okay, very good. Now, let's proceed. What are the two types of monsoons in the Philippines? A, Amihan and Habagat. 
B. Amihan and North East Monsoons C. Habagat and Southwest Monsoons or letter D. Northwest and Southwest Monsoons What's your answer? Okay, could have been answered A Okay, Richmond A Okay, almost all of you answered A The correct answer is letter A Very good, ayan, galing Okay, let's skip Skip the fire burning. What does ITCZ stands for? A. Intercontinental Convergence Zone. B. Intertropical Con Concurrence Zone. C. Intertropical Convergence Zone. Or letter D. Intertropical Convection Zone. So what's your answer for number two? Okay. The correct answer is letter C, Intertropical Convergence Zone. Ayan. So, medyo nalito kayo. Others answered letter A. Eh. Do not forget that it's Intertropical Convergence Zone. Why is it tropical? Because ITCZ is located near at the equator. We're in the Philippines. It's just above the equator. Okay, very good din yung mga nakatama. Congratulations! Okay, number three. What effect does the ITCZ have on the weather of the Philippines? Sabi ni Ma'am Janet, tricky one. Yes, I trick you for that. <laughs> okay, A, it brings dry weather. B, it brings wet weather. C, it brings stable weather. Or letter D, it brings a very hot climate. What's the answer? What effect does the ITCZ have on the weather of the Philippines for number three? Okay, it brings dry weather. B, it brings wet weather. C, it brings stable weather. Or letter D, it brings a very hot climate. Okay, so I think we have the answers. Kerubin answered B. Aliza, Ma'am Janet, Xavier, which is my student. Hello. Shimari, Josa, Galilea, all of them answered letter B. And the rest of the students answered letter B. The correct answer is letter, very good. It brings wet weather. It's letter B. Next. Which of the following is true about the impacts of atmospheric phenomena? Okay. What is which of the following is true about the impacts of atmospheric phenomena? A. Atmospheric ph phenomena do not affect people's lives. B. Atmospheric phenomena only affect those living in the city. C. Atmospheric phenomena greatly contribute to the stable weather condition in rural areas. Or letter D. Atmospheric phenomena affect the people in Mindanao in different ways, especially to the farmers and fisher folks. What's your answer? Is it A, B, C, or D for let number four? Okay. Josa answered letter D. Espilio answered letter D. Kerubin answered D. Kauri answered D. Sophia, which is also my student, and Kauri. Is answered letter D. RK, hello RK, letter D. Crystal and also answered letter D. The correct answer, let's check. It's letter D. Congratulations. Okay. I think this would be the last one. The last question, which is question number five. As a student, how are you going to lessen the impacts of these effects? You know, already the effects of monsoons, and the other phenomena happening in our atmosphere. A, make a song for the environment. B, burn plastics and garbage in my backyard. C, plant more trees to prevent flood and landslides caused by heavy rainfall. Or letter D, throw my garbage in the drainage and other ways in the canals to stop flooding caused by heavy rainfall. Okay. Oh, wow. Hindi pa ako tapos, pero may answers na kayo. I think you're all excited. Okay, very good. It's letter C. You have to plant more trees to prevent flood and landslides 
caused by heavy rainfall. I would like also to commend the, my, my students and also you as Itulai learners who planted trees, plants in their backyard. Ayan. Congratulations. And you have able to, to plant and help our environment. I hope hindi lang pagtatanim, kundi aalagaan. We have to, to do tree parenting and we have to parent and we have to take care of the plant that we have planted. Tingnan nyo naman kung tumubo ba siya or namatay. So you have to take care of the trees that you have planted so that it will be more sustainable. Now, kindly check and write your scores in our chat box. Ayan, I am very happy because marami ang naka-perfect. Ayan. Thank you, Lynn, JM, Xavier, Marlui, Nicolas, RK, Got Perfect, Aliza, Renz, Giver. Ayan, congratulations. Sa Espilio, Carlo Miguel is also perfect. Very good. Thank you so much for your undying support and your sustainability. Ayan, kapit lang po tayo. Now, this time, we have our science code of the week and that would serve as our guide during the whole week of our learning. Okay, so I am very excited to share our science code of the week. Our science code of the week is by Pastor Jimmy Duran. It goes, storms come and go. And with every passing storm, there is a new lesson to glean from. It is very nice to, to reflect on this quote by Pastor Jimmy Duran. That storms in our lives is just, just come and go. And we cannot able to, to stop those storms because that's part of our lives. All we need to do is to find the, re the lesson of the storms, the problems, the trials that you have. Find the lessons, learn from the trials, learn from the challenges that you have. Because from those learnings, you may able to apply, okay, to apply the learnings from your experiences and to become a better student, to become a better teacher, and to become a better citizen. Do not refuse to learn from those storms because those storms will help you, would help you to become a better person. Okay, so do not forget that. Oh, oh yes, you may be hurt this time, nasaktan ka man, very painful experience that you have. But take it positively that after the storm, there is a rainbow. A rainbow that symbolizes hope, that symbolizes freedom, and, a symbol and symbolizes of new learnings. So I hope that you may be able to learn that storms are just passing in our lives. And all we need to do is to embrace the storms and able to learn from it. Ayun. Thank you so much, Pastor Jimmy Duran, for that wonderful um, quote of the week. And I hope our students, our grade 7 students, would also apply the, the very wonderful message from Pastor Jimmy. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Now I am very excited to hear and to see your insights and your output regarding our topic for this day so that you will become the Mahusay Chuti of the week. By the way, for those who do not know me yet, I am Tutor Roger or Tutor Rogue at your service. Together with me is Tutor Jen from SDO Davao City. And thank you so much for comments, suggestions. Email us at edtech at devet.gov.ph or scan the code. Up next is Tutor Z and Tutor Marky from Science A. Bye! See you around! God bless and to God be all the glory. Ang husay naman! Natapos mo ang iyong tutorial session kasama ang iyong mahusay na itulay tutor. May bago ka bang natutuhan? 
i-share na yan gamit ang hashtag Itulay Level Up. Huwag aalis ha, dahil may susunod pang programa na pwede mo rin panoorin at salihan. Dahil naghihintay na ang iyong mga tutors. Happy learning dito sa Itulay!